And we're back like we never left. Oregon fans, what's going on? How we living? Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Ducks Dish podcast. Happy to have you along. Glad you're here on Monday, April 1st, 2024. I'm your host, Max Torres. Got some big news to get into on today's episode of the pod or a report, I should say. Um, of course, this came out late Sunday evening. Uh, you had Matt Zenitz of 247 Sports, who does an awesome job covering football on the national scene, national level. Rather, you have him covering uh, Transfer Portal and Coaching Carousel, all those sorts of news. Uh, you have Matt Zenitz of 247 Sports with a big report, Ohio State expects to finalize a deal as soon as tomorrow to hire Oregon's Carlos Lachlan as its new running backs coach. Sources tell 247 Sports. Zenitz goes on saying after working at places like Florida State, Memphis, and Western Kentucky, Lachlan has now developed players like current early round NFL draft prospect Bucky Irving at Oregon. So, before we get into, you know, kind of some more thoughts on this development, it does worth it does I think make sense to say that nothing official has been announced. Ohio State has not announced the hiring of Carlos Lachlan as of 12:39 Pacific out here at 12:39 p.m. Pacific time out here on the West Coast. Uh, I know I was a little bit late getting into today's show, but um, yeah, so that's kind of what we're working with right now. I'm um, going to talk a little bit about this development and and what I think it means for Oregon, what it means for Ohio State, a school that is now a main conference rival for Dan Lanning and the Ducks heading into the 2024 season. The Buckeyes will be coming out to Eugene to play uh, at Autzen Stadium um, in October. I believe. But before we get into all of that, make sure you guys do me a favor, like, comment, and subscribe wherever you are tuned into today's show. Whether you're listening on the podcasting platform or if you're here on YouTube at Oregon Football Max Taurus, let me know a little bit about your thoughts. Maybe ask a mailbag question. You guys can always comment below the video for the chance to be featured on a future episode of the podcast. So, I mean, I think for starters, this development comes at a tricky time for the Ducks because Oregon is scheduled right now to return to the practice fields on Tuesday to hold their third of 15 spring football practices as Dan Lanning enters year three at the helm of the Oregon program in Eugene. If we're just talking about Carlos Lachlan as a coach, this guy has been phenomenal at Oregon. And I think that he has definitely proven his, his worth as a coach. He has been a tremendous asset for the ducks. And um, obviously you look at what they've been able to do on the field. Oregon has always been a school, always been a team that has prided itself on a strong tradition of great running backs, great running back coaches having a tremendous amount of success just running the ball. I think one of the things that really stuck out to me with Carlos Lachlan is that he said right when he got the job, hey, when I look at the standard of the running back position at Oregon, I look at Coach Campbell. I can't remember the exact years, but he was obviously the longest tenured running back coach that we've seen at Oregon for quite some time. I think it was in the 80s to um to you know into the the 2000s so he he was a obviously an amazing coach at Oregon and then coach Lachlan knew that he stepped into those shoes and he had big shoes to fill at Oregon and look at what the Ducks were able to do with Lachlan on their team he came over from Western Kentucky and brought Noah Whittington with him also got Bucky Irving out of the transfer portal from Minnesota and Pretty much everybody that he brought over, with the exception of Dante Dowdell, who played one season with the Ducks and then entered the transfer portal. We, he didn't see a lot of playing time just because the room was so good. 
everybody that he brought over had a, a major impact. Bucky Irving was great. He looks like a, a surefire NFL draft prospect. Not exactly sure where he slates in the um, in the upcoming draft. Like maybe a middle round guy, third, fourth round. Uh, it's it's a little bit hard to tell because he had a great body of work, but um, but running backs are just kind of not as valued today as they used to be. But he also brought in a number of running backs um, at Oregon. You look in the 23 class, obviously you have Jaden Lamar and Dante Dowdell. Uh, Dowdell is now at Nebraska. And then in 2024, the Ducks signed Dejon Dink Riggs out of Washington, D.C., St. John's. And they also brought in Jay Harris, a Division II All-American from Northwest Missouri State. So um, you know, if, if this does end up being true and Lachlan's going to be moving on, it's it's obviously a tough time for this to happen because the Ducks are in the thick of spring ball. Um, but fortunately for the Ducks, you have two really proven guys that are coming back to play running back for you, right? You have Jordan James, who is coming back and, and looks like he's already kind of broken out, but he's in store for a really big year with the Ducks. Then you also have Noah Whittington coming off of the injury he had last year. He suffered a season-ending injury against Colorado in, uh, I think it was either September or October. So you got to see what he's going to have in store for the upcoming year. Um, I'm a huge, huge Jordan James fan. I think one of my biggest points in spring ball has been, or questions, I guess I should say, is I don't know if that running back one job is so solidly Noah Whittington's, or maybe it's Noah Whittington's to lose, but Jordan James pounced on that opportunity and had a heck of a year for the Ducks in 2023. We're already getting some some comments here in the live chat. We got Jackson Johnson. What's up, Oregon Duck Nation? Corey Duck says, go Ducks. What's going on, Corey? Glad to have you guys here on the show. Shepard Ducks with a comment here. He's got two of the best backs in the country at Ohio State. That is a slingshot job for him to be a head coach or coordinator with Henderson and Judkins. Yeah, Ohio State has some seriously talented backs on their roster. Um, I think that Judkins making that move from Ole Miss to Ohio State was one of the biggest moves of the entire offseason. If you're looking at people who chose a new school via the transfer portal. And I think another thing with, with Ohio State, it's it's like not even just looking at the head coaching positions necessarily, but for Places that a guy could leave Oregon for, I mean, I think you have to throw Ohio State in that conversation, right? They have a great history, uh, incredible resources. They're always landing top recruits. Um, not to say that Oregon doesn't have that, but just I think Ohio State is a school that can obviously be competitive with Oregon for coaches and, uh, and players, right? I think you'd probably say, what, Ohio State, Alabama, um, LSU, um, Georgia, obviously they lost Del McGee. Who's now at Georgia state, but th there's only a small handful of jobs is the point that I'm making here that I think would be really, really attractive, um, for someone that was, you know, potentially, you know, at Oregon or any other school and can, can be capable of kind of pulling a coach from a coaching staff. And I think Ohio state is certainly one of those spots and it makes it makes things interesting too if you just look at the connections between Oregon and Ohio State from a staff perspective they got Chip Kelly as their new OC from UCLA we I don't need to tell you about the the Ohio the uh Chip Kelly and Oregon connections from from his time spent in Eugene but there's that and then now you have Carlos Lachlan and then Ohio State and Oregon are also big uh Big rivals on the recruiting trail. The Ducks just flipped Jeremiah McClellan, a big-time All-American wide receiver in the 2024 class out of the St. Louis area, away from his Ohio State commitment uh, in the early signing period last year. So Oregon and Ohio State definitely feel like they're going to be seeing plenty of each other for a long, long time moving forward. They've already kind of become these rivals of sorts. Um, they went to the national championship. Oregon went to the national championship and faced Ohio state in the 2014 to 2015 season when 
the Ducks have Marcus Mariota and DeForest Buckner and Eric Armstead, Royce Freeman, all those guys. Um, so Ohio State and Oregon are, are definitely familiar with each other. But what else can we get into here with this? I mean, I've talked about how valuable I think Carlos Lachlan was for the Ducks, um, has been for the Ducks. and The guy is just an absolute, quote, machine. He, he definitely gives you that bulletin board material. I think that one of the things I really like about Carlos Lachlan is just how his guys have taken on his personality in that running back room. And I think you would kind of expect that for any position coach, but I think duck fans can probably agree that that's, that's a guy where you really see it show up um, because the ducks had some of the best play in the country at running back, right? You had, I can't remember what their numbers were, but like you had Bucky and Jordan James averaging North well North of five yards per carry. I think one of them was at like seven and a half yards. And what was the other thing that has been so valuable about the running back position under Carlos Lachlan? It's that those guys don't fumble. I'm going to do something a little bit unprofessional here on the show. I do need to check in for a flight. So I'm going to try to keep the show going and check in for the flight at the same time. We are flying Southwest tomorrow, hoping for that a group uh, in the boarding position. So Make sure you guys just uh, stay with me here, uh, hang in there with me. But, um, you know, just this next minute or so is crucial. As you guys know, it's crucial to have that next minute when you're checking in for a flight. Um, we got uh, we got Achilles Smith here uh, in, in the chat, former Duck quarterback, legendary Duck quarterback, saying he's a big loss, but the show must go on. And that is definitely, I think, where your head has to be if you are an Oregon fan, right? I think that Lachlan has been a great piece of this staff, but games still have to be played. You still got football to get through in the spring, and you still got some recruiting that you have to deal with uh, in the spring, specifically as it pertains to the 2025 uh, recruiting class. I just had a show earlier today talking about how important the month of April is for Oregon on the recruiting trail. We got B-17 on the check-in. I literally did it right as it turned to 12.50, but hey, the show goes on. It's not the end of the world. Let's get back to some Oregon football talk. So yeah, Oregon does need to, the show needs to go on. They have spring football now, and April is going to be the most important month, really, if you think about it, between now and fall camp, because that's when you have guys buying into the culture. You have some big-time transfer guys that are arriving we already know that running back Jay Harris is enrolled and uh, practicing with the Ducks. At least that's what it looked like we saw from those first two spring practices. I think one of the things that you talk about here when you look at, hey, the the show must go on, I think that you need to have a lot of confidence if, if Dan Lanning and the Ducks do indeed have to go out and hire a new running backs coach. L- look at the hires that Dan Lanning has made during his time as the Oregon head coach. I think that's one of the biggest things, one of the most important qualities in a head coach is having a guy at the helm of your program that is capable of making great hires. And maybe that was something that was um, a bit of a question mark or a point of hesitancy with Duck fans when Dan Lanning was first hired. You You have a guy that won a national championship with Georgia, so that's great. You have the championship pedigree, but because he is such a young head coach, I'm obviously going back in time here a little bit when Dan Lanning was hired by Rob Mullins uh, and the University of Oregon. He isn't a guy that has been, he didn't have any head coaching experience, but he's still been around the game for quite a while. And Lanning talked about how he had that lo- that list of coaches that he would want to join his staff if he ever got this opportunity. So you look at some of the hires that he's had to make in his short time as a head coach at Oregon, he had to replace Adrian Clem as offensive line coach when Clem opted to take a job with the New England Patriots. And who did he hire? He hired Alik Terry, who was a former GA at Oregon, played his college ball at Wake Forest. And I was talking about this on a, on today's episode of the show, um, or a little bit earlier on. It's a two-episode day, a twofer. Um, he hired Alik Terry, and a lot of people were thinking, oh, you bring in a new coach, you have to replace all these starters, Maybe there's going to be some kind of a drop-off here as far as Oregon's offensive line play. Did you see a drop-off? Because I didn't. I watched every game of the season last year, 
And I didn't see any drop off along that O line. And obviously they were one of the best in the country because they were one of the finalists for the Joe Moore award. Um, we know that Washington won it, but that's, that's kind of what I'm saying here is I think that Dan Lane has shown that he has a strong ability to hire the right coaches. Um, I'm thinking about, I mean, we're not really going to be able to tell for some of these, but there were some movements. There was some movement on the strength and conditioning side of things. When Shad Williams, uh, Jaworski Beckham, they opted to join, um, the Mississippi state staff. And we know of course that, uh, Beckham had ties to old miss. I think that's where he was before he joined the Oregon staff. Obviously Wilson love was over there. So you bring in a guy like that. I think that those are some of the moves that are going to be scrutinized or at least held under a microscope. And then you have to look at um, a couple other guys that Oregon has lost this offseason. Tony Smith Jr., uh, Tony Washington Jr., excuse me. Um, he was working with the outside linebackers at Oregon. He's obviously a former Duck who was on the team during that national championship uh, appearance, that run in 2014. He joined Chip Kelly's staff at UCLA. And now you have uh, Demetrius Martin also a guy that has moved on to a new job um, coaching the cornerbacks. And now he is returned to Michigan state to coach at his alma mater. So what does Dan Lanning do? He promotes Chris Hampton from safeties coach and co-defensive coordinator to defensive backs coach. So he's obviously taken uh, a bigger role in the coaching staff there. And then you have a guy like Rashad Wadud uh, who was working with the corners um, and I guess a lower level position, you know, GA analyst type of deal. And you elevate him to take on a bigger role with the cornerbacks as well. So I think having young, like being a guy who takes a risk, I guess, if you will, or gives some of these younger guys their first shot at bigger coaching jobs, those are going to benefit you down the line for when you need to make a decision like this. So if, if Oregon does in fact need to replace Carlos Lachlan, I don't think that you necessarily hire from within um i don't think that is something that i see being very uh likely but the biggest point i was just trying to make there is that if dan Lanning needs to replace carlos lachlan i think that he is more than capable of finding the right running back coach for the job and on, on another level too let's let's talk about some recruiting stuff and then maybe i'll get to some of these comments and questions Reminder, guys, if you have a comment or a question, hop in that live chat. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know your reaction to this report from Matt Zenitz that Ohio State is expected to finalize a deal for Oregon running back coach Carlos Lachlan, a position that was uh, made vacant when longtime Ohio State running back coach Tony Alford opted to head to the school up north, as they call it in Columbus, to join Sharon, Sharon Moore and the Michigan Wolverines as their new running backs coach. And this is one of those vacancies, one of the most, I guess, attractive jobs in the country. You had um, you had Georgia's running back position open at one point. I think Texas A&M might have been open when Mike Elko came over from Duke to take over the, the Aggie program in College Station. So um, I, I would think that Carlos Lachlan's name has been tied or at least up for consideration for a number of running back jobs. But like I said earlier on in the show, I think Ohio state is one of those jobs that is really, really attractive and capable of pulling one of these moves off. Right. So let's look at, uh, let's look at the recruiting impact for the ducks in, in a scenario like this, because I think, I think that with, with, the timing of this move recruiting is, is obviously a very important thing. Uh, if you guys follow me, you know how much I love to follow recruiting, but the ducks have recruited a number of really, really talented running backs here in the 2025 cycle. And I think that conversation kind of starts with Jordan Davison and Jordan Davison, as you all know, is a really talented, or if you don't know, I'm about to tell you really talented running back, one of the best running backs in the country in the 2025 class out of Santa Ana modern day. And he is a coach that had really, really close ties to Carlos Lachlan, a very strong relationship, uh, if you will. And he was another guy that was tied very closely to Ohio State during his recruitment. You know, you have Ohio State, Texas, Oregon was a big one. Michigan now is a, a bit of a newer school emerging for Jordan Davison. And, and that's not 
too shocking, right? When you consider that Tony Alford was on the Michigan staff, uh, is the newer member on Michigan staff now, and they had a relationship at Ohio State. So I'm curious to see what the recruiting fallout would be in a situation like this. You have Jordan Davison. Um, you also have Deer Hill out of the state of Illinois. Bo Jackson is a really talented running back out of the state of Ohio. Um, we know that Lachlan really likes to recruit backs out of the South. Um, that's been a big area where he has honed in on as a recruiter at Oregon. So I'm just trying to include some of the other running backs that the Ducks are going after uh, in the 2025 class. Um, I think a couple other ones that are, are worth a mention. You have Carson Cox out of Oak Hills High School in Hesperia, California, Southern California. I tend to feel like he is probably trending toward USC and they just hired a new coach, the running backs coach from, um, from TCU. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Um, let's see who else they have. The ducks also have an offer out to Jay Sean Lamar, uh, the younger brother of Oregon running back Jaden Lamar. So I think the other thing to keep in mind here, when you're looking at, um, when you're looking at the ducks and just kind of how things look, if this, if this does end up happening, Oregon has, has such a strong tradition with running backs. It's, it's like, you don't need to worry about running backs, not wanting to come to Oregon in a situation like this. I don't think that that's realistic. I don't think that that is likely um, pretty much regardless of who the running back coach has been at Oregon. It's almost always every year. I feel like a broken record when I'm writing the, the position preview in the spring the rich get richer or embarrassment of riches, something like that. That's always kind of the tone for Oregon's running backs. And I think that they have earned that because of the work that coach Campbell has put in during his time at Oregon. And then obviously uh, Jim Mastro was at Oregon for a little bit. And then you have Carlos Lachlan. So it's, it's just another, another chapter, I guess, of, of Oregon football. And, and this is just something that happens. This is a reality of, the sport you have coaches moving you have players moving and um that's kind of just another subtopic i guess is just what's going to happen with oregon and the transfer portal as spring ball ramps up maybe that's a topic to keep a closer eye on towards the end of spring football or maybe even after spring football i don't really like to speculate about guys leaving i think i tend to just like the to let the decision play out let the news play out and then uh, talk about it once it's happened so I think Carlos Lachlan has been a tremendous coach at Oregon, but they're, they're going to be uh, all right in the event that he does end up taking this job at uh, at Ohio State. Let's get into some of these comments and some of these questions to see what people um, have to say. No quarter tied, longtime listener of the show, longtime friend of the channel. He says, don't you think this is an outside of the box strategy from Ohio State, seeing as Ohio State seems like they can't win big ones and they see Oregon as a true threat? Um, that's an interesting question. I think that uh, this kind of reminds me of the frame of thought as far as the, the questions that we've seen Oregon coaches get asked as far as, hey, you're going to the Big Ten. You know, what, what do you think you need to change to adapt to this conference move? to get ready to play some of these new opponents, right? And I love Dan Lanning's answer. I'm paraphrasing a little bit here, admittedly, but he was saying something along the lines of, it's not so much that we need to adjust to the Big Ten and what their op our opponents are going to do, but they need to adjust to us and get ready for what Oregon's going to do. But this this would just continue a string of a crazy offseason for Ohio State. You lose Bill O'Brien as your OC. He goes to Boston College. You bring in Chip Kelly as your OC. You get Julian Sayan the All-American quarterback that was committed to Alabama out of Carlsbad, California in the 2024 class. You add him, you add All-American Aaron Noland, quarterback out of Georgia, Langston Hughes. That quarterback room looks crazy. Will Howard as well. And then you get Quinshawn Judkins from Ole Miss, and you get Caleb Downs uh, from Alabama, just top flight safety. But to your point, no quarter tie, I feel like this could certainly – back up or reinforce the thought that Ohio state knows Oregon's going to be uh, a contender in the big 10 and a big rival and, you know, maybe a thorn in their side. I think that 
you look at a move like this and it's a perfect example of Ohio state saying, Hey, they're that Dan landing guy in Eugene. He's doing something right. He did something right by hiring Carlos Lachlan and Carlos Lachlan has done a tremendous job at Oregon. And I want some of what he's doing over there out here in Columbus. So I don't know if I'd say it's necessarily an outside the box strategy. Um, it's something that happens in college football. I mean, look at what Sharon Moore did at Michigan, taking Tony Alford away from Ohio state. Any, any move that makes your enemy weaker and you stronger is something that I think, um, I think, uh, any college football program is going to want to do. We got Ruben in the chat. What's up, Ruben? Ranchito Grill uh, out there in Eugene. Get yourself some lunch at Ranchito Grill. Uh, Ruben says, what's up, Max? We'll see you for the spring game. I will see you for the spring game. Um, I think I've talked about it on the show a little bit here, but I am super, super excited about my upcoming return trip to the Northwest. My plan is to start that off on April 21st with a stop in Seattle for Under Armour. Seattle Under Armour next. Just can uh, just covered that event in Los Angeles, and then I will be in Eugene for the last week of spring practice, which of course culminates with the spring game on April 27th. So super excited to see Ruben and everyone else. Um, let's see. Jackson Johnson has a question here. What if Oregon hired Kansas State running back coach Brian Anderson? Kansas State was 10th in rushing yards for the season in 2023. He has done a tremendous job as running back coach at Kansas State. Admittedly, I haven't heard um, of Brian Anderson, so this could be uh, a new coach to watch for the Ducks, um, potentially. I think if you're looking at possible guys, possible candidates to um, to replace Carlos Lachlan if he does end up taking this job at Ohio State, I think you have to look at someone with clear ties to Dan Lanning, someone with clear ties to Marshall Malko. I think that's kind of where you have to start any kind of a coaching search uh, in today's age. It just makes the most sense. Uh, we obviously know that Dan Lanning and Carlos Lachlan coached together at Memphis. So there's that clear connection. Um, I'm trying to pull up this, this little uh, bio here on Brian Anderson, just to get a better feel for who he is as a coach and what's going on there. Taking a little sip of uh, a poppy. I don't know if you guys drink poppy or if you know about it. Prebiotic soda. Got myself a strawberry lemon here on the show. But uh, glad to have you guys along for an episode of the Ducks Dish Podcast here on YouTube at Oregon Football Max Taurus and on Twitter at M Taurus Sports. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Let's get back to Jackson's comment here about Brian Anderson. He is the current running backs coach at Kansas State, which has really been a very, very solid program. And you have Deuce Vaughn, who came out of Kansas State recently, is the running back that I think of. He is now with the Dallas Cowboys. Maybe he's in line for a bigger role with um, with Tony Pollard um, making a move. Is he on the Commanders now? I want Oh, Titans. Tony Pollard is now on the Titans, so maybe we'll see a little bit more of Deuce Vaughn. But just as far as Brian Anderson, the running backs coach at Kansas State, he has been a coaching for 30 years. He's been at Kansas State for six years, and he is a, a native of Rockford, Illinois. So I think he would be an interesting candidate potentially to look at here um, for the Ducks. I, I don't think he has a connection to Dan Lanning that I can see just by looking at his, his resume and where he's been. He was the wide receivers coach at Illinois State prior to joining the Kansas State staff. I think a couple of interesting names to keep an eye on potentially for the Ducks if this move does end up going through. Um, I mean, it looks like it's going through. I feel weird having to, you know, kind of tiptoe around it like that, but we just don't know for sure until something is announced what the actual move is going to be. Uh, I think that one of the guys to to watch here, potentially, if the Ducks find themselves in the market for uh, a new running backs coach, is Rashad Samples. He is uh, a name that I've kind of heard a little bit, even in some discussions today, some conversations today. He is a, the wide receivers coach at Arizona State under Kenny Dillingham, and um, he is a very well-respected coach. He was previously at SMU 
prior to joining Arizona State staff. He was hired as the NFL's youngest position coach at just 27 years old when he was the running back coach for the Los Angeles Rams. And uh, Arizona State's bio here, just reading off of their site, thesundevils.com, he was instrumental. Samples was in the evaluation process, which led to the drafting of Kyron Williams for the Rams. And then I think another one, another name that I've just heard even today, um, if you're looking at who could potentially be um, an option for the Ducks in the event that they do need a new running backs coach is Alonzo Carter, who is now the assistant head coach and running backs coach at Arizona. He was with San Jose State and Brett Brennan uh, prior to taking the job as the running backs coach in Tucson and coached the running backs at San Jose State as well. So those are kind of just a couple of names to potentially keep an eye on. I think that could be uh, interesting to follow. Got a question from Christian Rowe over on X, formerly known as Twitter. Christian's question, how concerned should we be about OSU knowing our system now? I mean, this is just, I guess, a natural question that maybe comes um, comes whenever there is coaching movement like this within the conference um, of a coach that spent time on a staff and then now is joining someone who's going to be playing them next year. I think... I mean, I guess it's a it's a valid question, but I don't think I would necessarily be concerned about it because a coach is going to make changes to. I, I'm sure that this would be something that crosses a coach's mind that you just have to kind of keep your opponent on their toes and you know make subtle, small, subtle changes so that you can. Uh, I think that happens year to year, almost regardless. So I don't think it's necessarily I would be something I would be too concerned about. Corey Duck with a question here. Do you think OSU's run game will have a significant advantage given Lachlan is likely quite familiar with our run defense scheme? I mean, I, I guess you you have that obvious familiarity, but it's going to be new personnel for the Ducks in large part along the defensive line. Uh, if you're just looking at Oregon's run defense, uh, you do get some key pieces back with Jordan Birch. Uh, Keon Ware Hudson is a guy who's played a lot of football for the Ducks, and then Jamari Caldwell comes over from Houston. So I don't think that um, – I think that there's there's obvious overlap, right? But I think that Oregon should still be able to, um, you know, coach them up and and, and field a, a really good run game um, in, in 2024. So I'm super focused on um, moving forward. But I'm trying to think if there's anything else that, that I want to hit on and was kind of just going to have a little bit of a shorter show today. Um, like I said, we already had a show earlier today talking about how important the month of April is for the ducks on the recruiting trail. So make sure to give that one a listen, give that one a watch if you haven't already. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of like we've talked about before, right? Like when coaches leave or they get poached by other programs or like, that's just a sign that you're doing something right in Eugene. And I think that Dan Lanning continues to make a name for himself as one of the best coaches in college football. I know a lot of people want to get hung up on those losses to Washington, but Oregon's not going to have to face Kalen DeBoer at Washington anymore. Now you got to deal with Jed fish as the head coach over there on Mont Lake. So there's a lot of interesting rivalries that we're going to get to watch in 2024. This is going to be a new chapter of the Oregon U dub rivalry, not only because Oregon's going to the big 10 and Washington's going to the big 10, but, you got a new coach over there at Jed Fish, and Jed Fish is going to have a lot more resources at his disposal now than he had at Arizona. And a big part of that is the bigger market that you're in, and you're going over to the Big Ten. So I'm excited to see that. Um, but again, just kind of reiterating that Dan Lanning has been a really effective hirer um, or showing a strong ability to hire some really talented coaches during his time at Oregon. And I think that backs are still going to want to come to Oregon. I think you you see guys like DeAnthony Thomas, LaMichael James, Royce Freeman, uh, and then now um, a guy like Bucky Irving, uh, who I think is really, really, really suited for the direction that football is going. Um, a guy that can run the ball really well, uh, protect in pass coverage, really excels at catching the ball out of the backfield. I think you see a guy like that heading off to the NFL and you're going to continue to see Oregon reap the rewards 
of playing some really good football and hiring great coaches like Carlos Lachlan and just the work that he was able to do while he was on the staff at Oregon. So this is going to be something that we continue to follow uh, in the coming days. What uh, ultimately ends up happening with Carlos Lachlan. Um, still no official announcement, it looks like. Um, I'm going to double check Twitter here to see if there's anything new on the front. I'm not seeing anything new right now. I mean, for whatever it's worth, 23 hours ago, they, they tweeted a GIF um, of Robert Downey Jr. with the boom. So I don't know if that's potentially um, referencing that, but we'll keep an eye on this one. Uh, I still think that this, I think it was a notable loss if Carlos Lachlan does end up going to Oregon, uh, Ohio State, excuse me. But I don't think it's a loss that uh, Oregon wouldn't be prepared to navigate and navigate swiftly. You have to think with spring football about to kick off, they would want to get a guy in place sooner rather than later. But overall, I think uh, that's pretty much what I got for you guys on this episode of the Ducks Dish Podcast. So make sure you lock in with me on Twitter at mtorres Sports, uh, Instagram and Twitter. Same name right there on your screen. Subscribe to my YouTube channel here at Oregon Football Max Torres. We just hit our thousandth video earlier today. One thousand videos covering the Oregon Ducks. That's crazy, but I love doing it. I love interacting with you guys and um, sharing the story of Oregon football with you guys, the fans. And then you can uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel at Oregon Football Max Taurus. I think I already said that. Read me over on Ducks Digest and share the show, share the Ducks Dish podcast with your friends, with your family, and with other Ducks fans. Thank you guys for stopping in. Thank you for taking some time out of your day to talk some duck football with me, and we'll see you in the next episode of the Ducks Dish Podcast.